Good afternoon all, this is Anirban. Today I wanted to share my experience on creating a RAD pipeline at, uh, and share some of the best practices that I've seen from implementations at uh, different customer sites and some of the things that uh, customers are looking for. So I'll share my learning experiences as I build this RAG system. I'll be using the Pinecone Vector Database, the cloud-based Pinecone Database, a free account. I'll be using the OpenAI embeddings to generate the vectors. I'll be using the Coher API to re-rank the responses from the Vector Database. And I'll be using the OpenAI to generate the final answer based on the results of the vector search. So this is my setup. Uh, of course, I'll be using Langchain. Uh, so for various functions, for example, to ingest a document into the vector database, I'll be using the Langchain by PDF loader or the text splitter, the OpenAI embeddings, as we can see here. So these are some of my imports, the Langchain prompt template, LLM chain, OpenAI, and all that. So as we can see here, uh, I'll be using a batch interface to to uh, experiment uh, with my documents and create queries. And once I have done, I'm, I've done experimenting with my batch interface code, I'll convert it into a REST API and show how this code can be quickly converted into a REST API. To start with, I'll start with this, that um, we will initially not need the Cohere, so I'll not go into this Cohere API key. So Cohere is a, platform uh, for doing various things. It can generate embeddings. We can read up on that. Uh, but one of the reasons I'm using it here is to re-rank the responses from the vector search query. So uh, we'll be using that later. Right now, we'll be basically here, the important stuff is uh, we are using the Pinecone API key and we are creating an instance of Pinecone uh, vector database. And we are creating a Pinecone index. I'm calling it my rag index. And here I have a flag. So if this flag is true, what I do is I delete the index and create the index again. So it's a fresh index without any data. Uh, so once I do that, I basically, if the first thing I do is I um, ingest some documents into the vector database. So I add the documents. It could be the customer confidential documents. Right? In this case, I'm using a PDF document, kind of a climate report, which I have downloaded from the internet. So this is a process talk method, which does that. It takes this file name and the path to the file. So what it does is it, it basically uses the pi PDF loader, because here I'm assuming the file is a PDF file. It can be other formats also. We have different types of uh, document loaders in Langchain, and we can use that as we need. So I'm splitting it uh, based on this loader dot load and split and then i'm using this recursive character text split, uh, splitter so this is something that i have found has given good result uh, in some of our experiments and the results have been verified by business analysts so, so from that perspective i'm speaking that uh, we need to experiment with different chunking techniques over here and here a chunk size of 1000 and 200 is what I'm using. If the results is not optimum, we might have to change this setting and play around with it. So once we do that, we just iterate through the pages and for each page here, we create the chunks. We use this text splitter in instance and split the text, the text belonging to the page dot page content. Once I have the chunks, I can create the embeddings. So get embeddings from the chunks gives me the embedding. The get embeddings method is defined here. Here, so it's a one line method embedded doc equal to embeddings dot embed documents. So it takes us array of documents, documents in the sense, these are just basically a set of text blocks, right? So each document is a block of text. So it uses this embeddings and uh, which I have initialized here, OpenAI embeddings, text embedding add 002. 
and it is creating that uh, array of embeddings and returning returning it back so that's what i use here the embedded vector is equal to get embeddings and then for we loop through the chunks which we have created and for each chunk we prepare the data to be inserted to be into the pine cone uh, vector database so before that uh, i like to show the setup in the pine cone database how it looks like mm. so the pine cone console is uh, here so this is the pinecone console and uh, where we can go and see the index right now it has 201 vector counts and i'll show how this 201 comes up here uh, this is important to match uh, the count of vectors which is what i was having some issues you know and uh, we i corrected it slowly so it's i'll go through that so when, once we go through the chunks one by one we create an um, array of prepped vectors which is to be inserted in the pine cone uh, vector database so what does it have it has basically it the id is very very important the values right i'll come to how the id is being created here the values which is the embedding vector which is what we use to search the database and the metadata and the text for that chunk is stored as a text field within the metadata we can add whatever metadata we need so i have added for example the file name the page number and this is important because most customers also want to know when we are getting a result from the vector database and the LLM. They want to know which file it is coming from, which page and all that. So we are storing all that stuff. Whatever applies uh, in anybody's case, uh, they can add that metadata. I have added the source and the page number and the actual text of that chunk. So here I'm incrementing the chunk number. And here I'm implementing the chunk counter. Now this chunk counter is something which I'm initializing outside this loop, total loop. And here I'm doing a batch insert. So I'm taking an approximate number of 20. So when the number of chunks exceeds 20, I'm doing index.upsert and initializing this prepped uh, array of vectors. So this is uh, very important how we create the ID field. Here I'm creating the ID field with the file name which I'm ingesting. Uh, I'm just getting the last part of the file name, not the entire path, only the name of the file. I'm doing a hash and then I'm using the chunk counter ID which is goes like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and all that. So this uh, might help us to organize the data or fetch the data later on, a kind of uh, ID preparation like this. So I'm using this and not only this, this ID has to be unique for all the uh, vectors we are inserting. Otherwise, what will happen? The number of vectors that we are getting in the database and the number of chunks we are having may not match. And I was having that problem for quite some time. Not only that, if you see here when we come out, so let's say there are in the last chunk, there are only five records. So it's not going to go into this loop. So when we come out of this bigger loop, we need to still check if the length of the vector is uh, greater than equal to zero mm. it should be greater than zero not greater than equal to zero be greater than zero then we uh, do another round of batch upsert and finally i'm printing the page count in the document the chunk count uh, and making sure the chunk count and the vector count is same so i'll just run this so this is the thing and i will go to the main method i have number of things that i'm doing in the main method so um, I will I will enable the method which I want to call now. So I'm right now uh, trying to add the uh, this climate change uh, report IPCCR6 SYR SPM dot uh, PDF. So if you see it here, uh, this this is the PDF I'm trying to add. It's a quite a extensive PDF on the current state of the climate change and I was showing by querying this uh, PDF in one of my last uh, sessions. Today I'm going to do this more extensively by doing re-ranking and asking complex questions and seeing how the re-ranking is from Cohere is having a effect on the answer. So, so I'm giving this uh, path to this document which I want to ingest into the vector database and uh, i'm just creating the vector database from the beginning because i don't want to use what i have so create database is true so it will delete the existing index it will create a new index 
I'm using a pod spec over here. Now this is important because serverless spec is, I think, not available in the free tier. I'm using a pod spec with the environment as GCP starter environment. Pod type is starter, pods is one. Index name is what I've chosen. The dimension is important. So we need to know what is the dimension of those vectors. So in this case, open embeddings, open AI embeddings, uh, we know that uh, it gives 1536 dimensions vectors. So that's what we're providing. And the metric is cosine metric. That's what we're going, going to use. So let me run this. I can put a print statement here. Just to have a confirmation. I think I didn't pass this second argument over here, which is fine. Okay. Right. So I need to pass the name of the index. That's what it's expecting. And since I have already created the database, I will mark this as false. So do not create the database again, since the database is already created. So it is going through this uh, main method. I think I put a print hello or something. So it's okay so it is now processing this document and we can check the fine cone index so we can see the vector count incrementing over here and this is what i wanted to say that i found that uh, it's important to match this vector count with what the number of chunks we are trying to insert so Sometimes this can be tricky and the batch upset process can cause issues and the numbers can be mismatched. So I know that I see here that there are 56 pages in this PDF and the number of chunks is got is 201 and the document has been added to pine cone indexed index. So if I see here, this number should match the number I've got over there. <coughs> I see that the vector count is 201. Now, uh, once I have this uh, uh, document in the vector database, I want to get uh, the responses to my queries. So that is where I'm using this get recommendations method, where I'm passing the instance of the fine cone index, which I've created a query, the top K, which means how many results from the vector database nearest matches we want to return. Return single equal to true. This return single function I'll explain. There's some significance over here. So I'll come to that. But first, let's see what we're doing. What we do first is we take the query, the English query that we want the response for, and we get the embeddings for that. So this is my embedding, which gives me the embedding, vector embedding for this particular query that I am trying to get the answer for. And then I do pinecone index dot query. So this is where I'm searching the vector database where I say vector equal to this is my query vector embed okay we can name it properly a uh, top k is how many results we need to return from the database include metadata equal to true include values equal to false now 
this metadata is very important because we want to know which files this uh, answer is coming from so here for this matches uh, this pinecone returns in an object called matches we are looping through this and we are printing out the metadata which is the file name the page number and the score which uh, pinecone has given for this search result right? and so since we have said top k equal to three we'll get three results now we can see the contexts i can set as x metadata text for x in reco matches so i can take this text part which which is being returned from the vector database and create an array of contexts since uh, i'm getting three results from the database this also will be a length of three and this is my chat template now where i'm saying answer the question based on the context below the context is this and the query is this question is this and this is the answer that's all i'm giving to the llm my llm is open ai model where i'm using gpt 3.5 turbo 16k whatever and anybody is free to experiment with other gpt models temperature i have kept as zero again we can experiment with different settings of temperature top key and all that so we create a prompt by using prompt template dot prompt template llm chain prompt and the llm and all we do is llm chain dot run here this is where the return single um, value i'm checking so if the return single is true what we can also do is we can give this context that is a three search results at a time to the llm and get the response to the query so the llm understands which is the best response and formulates the response that way leave it on the llm or what i've also seen in some cases we can go through the uh, results of the vector search and for each of those responses that we are getting from the vector search the search result we can actually invoke the llm for each of those so here we are setting context equal to x metadata text for x in reco matches so if there are three such matches in the vector database because we have specified top k equal to three we'll get three answers from the llm the reason i'm saying is in one of our experiences we found that uh, you know when the llm is returning the result it may not always be that the top result returned by the vector database is the best according to the business the business might when we when we what I, what i did is we took the top three results and sent it to the uh, business for verification and in some cases we might see that the second best result coming from vector search is the best result right it, it could in some cases also be the third best result so it may not always be that the top result is always giving the best result so it might make sense to uh, generate three answers top three top five we can vary it and let business pick the best answer or in some cases we can say no we don't care about that we just sent the top three answers to llm and let llm choose the best answer and return it to us so that is the return single if return single is set we are sending the whole context with all the results from the vector search to the llm and llm is returning us the answer so uh, we'll do that and uh, now uh, since the um, we have done the document processing we can now ask a query so for example the query can be how is the ca2 emissions distributed over the globe historically and we can say reco equal to get recommendations uh, we can say top k equal to 5 articles index we give the um, input uh, and the database which we have created just now the query top k and the return single is true so we are saying give me in one shot what is the answer so we can check that so let me run this let me make sure that the create database is turned false otherwise we're going to delete and create a database we lose the content what we have so right so we have it from so now let's see what happens we are giving this question to the so return single equal to true so it has given me one answer the co2 emissions are distributed unevenly over the globe historically in 2019 and 35% of the global population lived in countries emitting more than 9 tons CO2 EQ per capita while 41% lived in countries emitting less than 3 tons CO2 EQ per capita. So we can see it has given an answer. 
Now, again, we are not the business experts, so we don't know what the business will say. Uh, looking at this answer, they might expect a better answer. We don't know. So in such scenarios, we can say return single equal to false. And if we do that, we will get for each result from the vector search, we'll get one answer. So let's see. I've set return single equal to false. So it is giving me the metadata page number and the score and it has given me the five answers. So the first answer is this. The second answer is from page eight with a score of 0.852 and it says very short answer, cryptic answer. Third answer, not that good. Looks to me the one which combines all the answers was um, the single response was better in such scenario but it can vary depending on the scenario. And what I'm trying to show is these are the two ways of operating, right? And what is the third way of doing is once we get the answers from the vector database, so this is the same thing that is happening. The first part is the same. Here I'm doing a get recommendations with re-rank. So the basic process is the same. We embed the query. We do a pinecone index dot query. We get the documents which are matching. And then we pass it to the cohere re-rank algorithm. So we say cohere dot re -rank, query equal to query. We say documents equal to docs dot keys. So this docs dot keys is nothing but the text that we are getting from the vector search. And we specify a model. And now the context becomes the text from the re -rank documents. So that's the difference. Otherwise, everything remains the same. So this is the get recommendations with re-rank. In this case, we'll always get a single answer because we are re-ranking and then giving the context to the uh, open AI. So you can see how that works. So it has given me that for the top k equal to five, these are the uh, these are the metadata it has got for the five searches: page number, this, 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 this. The highest score is 0 0.857, then 852, such and so and so. And then it has sent this to Cohere for re-ranking, and then it is giving the answer based on the re-rank results. So it's saying CO2 emissions are distributed unevenly across the globe historically. It's kind of similar to what we got even uh, without re-ranking in this case. But in some cases, the re-ranking can make a lot of difference and it's one of the best practices. So concept is simple. We take the output from the vector search. The, this is the output. We create a document vector with only the text part of it from the vector search. And uh, we send these documents uh, to the uh, re-ranking algorithm of Cohere. And once we get the response from Cohere, after re-ranking, we send that as an input to the LLM. So that's, that's what. So with that, uh, now my basic, uh, this thing is done, uh, the experimentation on RAG. Now, some of the things that I have seen, we have also seen some customers want is, for example, they want to list uh, what are the documents in the vector database. I might have added multiple PDFs. So how I can know what documents are there in my vector database. I want to delete some documents. So we can do that also. So I'll just quickly show that. So here I will. So in order to show that there are multiple documents, I, I need to at least process another document. So I use this document, which is an invoice of a book. Uh, which I have and I am adding it to the same index. Uh, once it is done, I list the documents from vector database. So 
so it's just one page pdf it has added it so once i have added it if i do a now a list uh, doc list vector db with that index i should be able to see two documents now i see both the documents invoice this whatever and so we can even now uh, check whether we are uh, able to get response from the second document given a query which pertains to the second document so i'll just ask a question different question so which i know it is there in the second document so i'm asking a question and let's see i don't think i need uh, this many metadata i just set it to one because it's a one page pdf so let's see that um, what metadata we get for this question it should hit the second pdf which i have just ingested and not only that i should check the vector count should have increased by one because there was only one page and there was only one chunk created out of that so this is also important so i just now ask the question so it gives me the answer i did one bought the book hands on machine learning circuit if i ask a question what book did anyone buy and from whom let's see if it can answer is a from anirban bought the book hands on psychic learn this 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 from shroff publishers and distributors private limited so it's working pretty good now i also wanted to check that um, can i delete let's say this second document i have uh, i have basically um, ingested by mistake so i want to delete this document so what i do is i get the id so this is a two step process i need to get the array of document ids for this particular document from the index and pass this to the delete method right so let's see once i delete this document uh, if i ask this question i should not get an answer so let's test that out so now what i am doing is i am deleting the document invoice something okay and then if i list my documents i should be able to see only one file so let's see now it shows only one file and now if i ask this question uh, that what book did anil one by what line what am i going to get it should not hallucinate it should not give me a, it should give me that that is information is not available there is no information provided in the context about anil one by a book, book or from whom which is correct because i don't have that so these are some of the operations that i have seen that um, some of the business are looking for that how to ingest a document how to list the documents what i have how to delete a unwanted document right all those things and how can i get the answers uh, which suits my needs uh, how can i verify the answers how can i see the metadata for the answers and how can i choose the correct answer in some cases they are saying that yes it's okay you give me the first uh, three or the first five best answers and we will choose which is the best answer right so all those things i was trying to show and uh, these all things can be um, easily uh, put into a rest api for business to consume with a nice ui and everything so before that i didn't explain the list vector db uh, function so here in the list vector db there is a little bit of a work around with with 
with the pod spec which comes in the free tire we are basically um, we are checking the metadata source for all the matches we are doing a dummy match with a zero vector and we are saying top k equal to so uh, having shown how to list the documents from a vector database how to delete uh, the delete part uh, i didn't show quickly i'll show here so basically what we do is we get the document ids from the vector database so we try to again match with a zero vector this is the indirect way uh, and where we say filter uh, with a filter with a source e equal to file name because that's the uh, metadata we are storing for the vector uh, and then once we get the IDs, we just put it into an array and then uh, we can always go and uh, delete those documents based on the IDs. So the delete doc is very simple, index.delete ID is equal to ID. So it's a two-step process. We basically uh, get the IDs from the, from the index, vector index. And once we get the IDs, we just delete the document based on the IDs. So that's what it is. Uh, so we saw that uh, how we can add delete documents uh, from the vector database. And now we will just do the same thing by enabling this uh, using a REST API, which is really most important because when we do something in organization context, it's not enough that it runs on one's own system, right? It has to be enabled using REST API. And uh, so that is what I'll be uh, doing now so for that i'll move into this uh, this subfolder rest services so i have this uh, main.py where i am basically um, Uh, creating these REST endpoints, which are basically uh, first thing I want to do is I want to ingest the document. So this is my ingest endpoint. Uh, so uh, I have this data models created here. Uh, so it gives the data, the response model is data models dot output ingest, ingest a PDF doc and accepts a PDF file. So I allow the user to upload a file and basically I ingest the file into the vector database. I write it into a temporary path. And once I do that, I basically ingest util dot ingest talk. So my ingest util is there in the utils folder and ingest talk is what uh, I'm using to ingest the document. So here again, it's the same code which I showed in the batch interface, just a copy of the same code. It, it, it ingests the documents right, and returns status. So that is my ingest uh, process. And uh, then I can also do is list the documents which are ingested in the vector database. I might, I might not keep track of what documents I'm ingesting to the vector database. So this is a nice utility where we can list the documents in the vector database. As I said, Pinecone, the free trier is not giving a direct way to list the documents. Uh, it is like an indirect way to get the documents based on the metadata which you have stored for the documents and uh, then showing it to the user, right? So that's what we are doing now. We can delete the documents. So as I said, we get the document IDs from the file name from the index and then use that ID array to delete the documents. So I will start this REST API, but before that, I will, I will, I will basically uh, remove the vector database that I created so that I can create a fresh new database over here. And uh, so I'll just I don't need all this. All I'll do is I will here I will in this batch code now I will run the. We can create the database within the um, REST API also, but I would say it is always better to create a database index and then use it in the REST API. So I'll put create database equal to true. So what it'll do is it'll delete the existing database and create a new database. So 
we can see it as well in the console that yes uh, the database is getting created yes vector count becomes zero so the new database is created so um, that's all we needed so now i will start up my rest services So we have uh, started the UVCon and we have started the fast API. So this is where it is running localhost colon 8000 slash docs. So this is a Swagger interface. So we are seeing that we have ingest, ingest a PDF doc, query a set of docs, list the documents, list the contents of the RAG database, delete the specified document from RAG database. So we want to ingest the document. We'll try it out now. We'll choose the file, IPCC, the, the, the PDF file, which is a climate report. I, it is with I, this one. So it is, it has, it is first writing this file into this temporary folder. We can see it is written. And from here, it will go and ingest this document using the process that we just described. It will take a bit time because it's it's a big document. You might have to wait a bit. Let's check the Pinecone console by that time. We don't need this. Yes, it is ingesting. We can see the documents coming up here. We are almost there now. Doc added to Pinecone index. So if I go back to my REST API, I will I should see a status of success. So this document is now there. If I do a list docs from the vector index, I should be able to. This doesn't require any parameter because all I'm doing is listing the documents from the vector database. So I should be able to see the document. It is saying that this particular document is there. Now we can add one more document, which is that invoice I was talking about. So choose file invoice UPH. This is the one I was trying. Execute. This is done pretty soon because it's just one piece, status success. So now if I do a list docs, I should be able to see both the documents there. Yes, I can see both the documents are there, right? The same way I can do a delete doc also if I want. I'm not trying it now. So I can give the file name here. And I can say, please delete this document if there is an unwanted document in the database. So now the main thing is a query interface, the REST interface for the query. So I can try it out. I can ask a simple question. Start with that. What book did Anirban buy? So the model name, I've given a drop down here. There are no other values. There is only one value. But this is just to imply that we can give different values here. We can try GPT-4, GPT-3 and all that. This is a top K from the rank, which is the top results I'm getting from the rank database. I'll set it to one because it's a very simple question. I don't want multiple these things. Re-rank is what I was saying that I will now use a search without a re-rank. I'll set it to false because this is a very simple question. Single response is true. I don't want multiple answers because I know this is a very specific answer. Temperature, top P and max tokens. We can change these parameters as we go along by an experiment. Right now, we are not varying these things. So we'll say execute. So it says Anirban bought the book hands-on machine learning with scikit-learn, Keras, and this thing. We can also change the question a little bit. What book did Anirban buy? And from um, whom? Um, 
Anirban bought the book, this, 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 from Shraf Publishers and Distributors privately. Now we'll change the question. And the important thing is the metadata that's coming here. So it's saying it is coming from this particular PDF, page number zero, and the score is this, right? Since I've set the K2, one. Now we will go to a slightly more. Remember that we have two documents here in our database. And if we remember the list API, there was that list docs. We, we have these two documents here. So it is saying the answers are from this. Now we'll ask a little more complex question. How much did the temperature, global temperature, change in 2011 as compared to 1850? Let me ask a question. Uh, I'll put the top K diet as three, but a single response, I'll keep it true. Let's see what happens. Very simple answer, global temperature. This thing. Source file name is this. Highest rank is score is 0.88, page number 22. And these are also there. So it is giving me a very clear answer. How much did the global surface do? Now, little more complex question. How was the CO2 emission distributed historically? Here I can say a top K rank of 5. I can say initially re rank false. I can say a single response is false. I want all the responses. And re rank also false. I'm not doing a re ranking to start with. And let's see what answer we get. So since top K is five, we should get five answers. I'm setting single response to false also. So as we see, we have got five answers. This is an array where there are five answers. First answer is a little bit cryptic as we can see this point that I was trying to mention, which is from my experience, if you see here, if I had taken the first answer, it probably I would have got this one answer. This is a little bit cryptic, but the second answer seems to be a little more detailed and much better, right? The distribution of CO2 emissions historically varied with some countries emitting high levels of CO2 per capita while others emitted much lower levels, least developed countries, etc., etc., etc. So uh, now, since I am not the business, I cannot always um, say that this is the best answer. In this case, it is a climate we all know we may say, but even here there are experts. So which is the best answer? We might allow the business the flexibility to choose from these multiple answers. So that is one way of working, right? And we can see that the metadata is from these pages. A business wants to know these are the files and from these pages it's getting, these are the relevance uh, scores. Now, if we want, okay, I don't want, I want only one answer from the LLM based on these five results. We can still keep the top K rag as five and we can say single response is true. Then I should get only one answer from all these contexts. So it gives more than half occurring between, well, this is not the correct answer, mind you. So uh, this is gi giving a different with the distributions in different times. But what we are looking for is distribution globally, the CO2 emissions. So this is where it gets complex. So now I might turn the re-rank to true. When I say re-rank to true, my single response will always be true. Even if I change it to false, it will not work because it will re-rank and send the context to the OpenAI. And uh, OpenAI will give the um, answer based on the re-ranked results. Right? Let's look at that. Historically, CO2 emission distributes across different sets of emissions from energy, industry, transport, and buildings accounting for 78% of the remaining that came from agriculture. So this is a distribution according to the industry. The initial year we were getting distribution according to the countries, highly developed countries, low developed countries, right? So this could be a problem with the question also. How was the CO2 emissions distributed historically? Mm in the according to let's see what this gives it 
So we are getting different answers. Now if I don't do the re-rank, I put a re-rank as false, what do we get? We get the same answer. So this may not be as good answer. That's the point I was trying to say. So the answers are a little bit different when we are re-ranking as compared to when we are not re-ranking. And sometimes it has been seen that re-ranking is a best practice and we might want to use re-ranking. How was the seed emission list? Make it a little more specific. Yes, now it gives that, you know, uh, 9 ton CO2 per capita equivalent per capita while 40, 41% live in countries emitting less than 3 tons CO2 equivalent per capita and all that. So this is how with a combination of re-ranking, getting multiple responses, single responses, we can uh, get different results. There are different things we can experiment with here like the temperature, the top P, the max tokens, this can also be changed, the model can be changed. Even in some cases, in some vector database, I've seen the search algorithms can be changed, right? So all these things can be made configurable or can be made in such a way that the user can input this, giving the maximum flexibility to the user and the user can then choose which set of uh, input parameters is giving the most optimum result. So this is what I intended to show that how this uh, vector database can be ingested, can be managed uh, with a set of documents and how the queries can be fine-tuned, the query results can be fine-tuned by using different input uh, parameters as well as uh, using the re-ranking mechanism from Cohere. So these are some of the things I've seen that the business is looking for very keenly and um, just wanted to share my experience quickly. It sounds very interesting to me. Uh, so that was the main reason, main motivation why I wanted to make a quick video and share it. And I will definitely add this uh, code, the REST API code into a GitHub repo and share it along uh, in, the, in the comments. Thank you all for watching.